All right. All right, good evening, everyone. I call the City Council Committee of the Whole meeting for Wednesday, September uh, 15th to order. A lot of things, again, going on. Your particular interests will have a moment of silence to think about those. Thank you, everyone. So if Alderman Connor would lead us, please, in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you, Alderman Condon. Brian, if you'd please call the roll. Dunn. Here. Dorman. Here. McGinnis. Here. Lee. Here. Grip. Here. Condon. Here. Miller. Here. Dickman. Here. Jokjin. Here. And Ambrose. <coughs> Ten. Present, Your Honor. Hey, thank you, uh, Brian. Wonderful. Good to see everyone again. Good evening uh, as we again begin the meeting of the City Council Committee of the Whole. Again, I'd like to welcome everybody in attendance here and anybody who's on any particular computer or mobile device. We respectfully welcome your comments and, and uh, opinions. Please keep in mind you're sharing those with your fellow Davenporters and everybody throughout the region. We're happy you're participating in your city government and ask that your participation please reflect the common desire we all share to make Davenport a greater place for everyone, especially for the folks in here if you have a cell phone I uh, ask you to please put on silent or, or turn it off simply that it doesn't get in the way of someone talking. If you want to address the council, uh, there's a little green thing in front of the table here. Just come up. The microphone's above you. Um, you'll have that opportunity for any agenda item. Um, and then public business at the end. You'll have five minutes. Please address the council as a whole, not any individual. We'll be respectful of you. Please be respectful of us. Thank you very much. City Administrator, Ms. Corey Spiegel, any update? Nothing this evening, Your Honor. Very good. So we'll move to public hearings. We have four of those in three different areas. The first one is in community development. Alderman Grip and Alderman Lee will lead that. Alderman Grip, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I open the uh, public hearing on the Consolidated Plan Annual Performance Evaluation Report for the year ending June 30, 2021. Is there anyone from the public here to comment on this public hearing? Seeing no one, I move to close the public hearing. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? This public hearing has been closed. Back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Grip. The next one, uh, the next two are in public works. So Alderman Dunn and Alderman Dormer will lead that. Alderman Dunn, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I open the first public hearing on the plan specification form a contract and estimated cost for the Goose Creek Shared Use Trail project from 53rd Street to 59th Street and Brady. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this public hearing? Seeing none, I move to close the public hearing. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. That public hearing is closed. I open the second public hearing on the plan specification form a contract and estimated cost for the Prospect Park sewer separation project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Seeing none, I move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign, and this public hearing is closed. And back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Dunn. The last area is finance. Alderman Condon and Alderman Miller will lead that. Alderman Condon, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I open the public hearing for the proposed conveyance of the city-owned parcel F0047-03 and F0047-28 to Kenneth Wilmington of 519 East 9th Street and former owner of parcel F0047-03. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Seeing none, I move to close the public hearing. Second. The motion is second. Uh, that closes the public hearing. Back to you, Mayor. Sorry, I apologize. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. And that will close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Condon. The next area is petitions and communications. Um, and I see Alderwoman Dickman. Thank you, Your Honor. Just wanted to make sure everyone knows that there will be a ward meeting October 19th for the second ward. Our finance department, our department head Mallory Merritt will be there to discuss the process by which we craft our budgets. It's, uh, it's actually more exciting than most people might realize. There's requests from the departments and then that gets sent up the chain and sent back down the chain. Um, all of the, te the technical details, too, about capital versus operational budgets and how your city is spending its money to try to make the best uh, of our resources long term. So hopefully you can join me 6 o'clock 
Fairmount Library, October 19th. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Alderman. Alderwoman Dickman. Alderman Ambrose. Thank you, Your Honor. A couple things. First off, I want to thank the welcome back our city administrator. I wish she would have been here last week so I could have asked her to explain why Riverview Park was closed without the good people in the great historic Washington Street neighborhood weren't notified along with uh, all the other people, particularly me, because after 25 years of working to uh, improve that park and make our neighborhood great, all of a sudden I'm driving by and the place is closed. So can you explain how that happened and why I wasn't notified and the rest of the council? So to clarify, Alderman Ambrose, the park is not closed. Well, cut, wait, wait, wait. So Alderman it's Ambrose, closed. You, you're asking hey, I got, letter, the, I got the floor. Let, let her answer. For an elderly person, for a person with special needs, it's closed. So go ahead. Vehicular access is currently limited. And that decision was made in conjunction with Alderwoman McGinnis the Parks Department, the Police Department, and several neighbors who attended many, many meetings. Well, that's a pretty weak excuse for closing up. The oldest park, the most beautiful park, the fountainhead of historic Washington Street. You know, I'd expect that from McGinnis or Matson, but from you. Mr. Ambrose, hey. please. I'm going to cut off your mic if you can. Yeah, yeah, you've, you've done it before. So I, I will. What's the process? To correct this, you know, we got the holidays coming around. You know, the neighbors have put Christmas decorations up there, and it's, you know, and I, I'm familiar with the way the city works. Is this going to be six months to a year before it goes through the process? I know you're a big process person. Staff continues to work with Alderwoman Woman McGinnis and her constituents in the adjacent properties to evaluate all sorts of options associated with the park. So we're tying this park into the immediate neighborhood and not the complete neighborhood of historic Washington Street? I think it's very unfair. And I think it's discriminating against the 3,000 elderly people that live in that neighborhood, they can't get to the park because they can't walk two or three blocks. So as this process moves forward, I would like to see the city reopen up the park. The neighbors in historic Washington Street will be more than happy to monitor for the parks and for the police department. But to keep this park closed, I think it's outrageous. That's the first item. So I'll, I'll stay on that. The next one is, I know it's not my ward, but down along the river, there's an enormous amount of graffiti down there. And I don't know if I should be the one turning it in or should be the ward alderman. But, you know, we've always dealt with graffiti. I don't want to see the beautiful riverfront park closed up because of uh, vandals and graffiti. Thanks. Anyone else? Uh, any folks down below? I think a couple had hands up, so I'll just go right to left. Alderwoman Lee. My question is for you, like I mentioned last night. Would you give us an update on the crime task force, uh, what your objectives are, um, what you've accomplished so far, and what you're intending to accomplish moving forward? Okay, so thanks, Alderwoman Lee, for asking. So we've had um, multiple meetings with the respective folks that uh, um, I think everybody's aware, um, so I won't repeat those. Um, we've discussed many um, different issues, whether it's housing or education or any other thing, and then had briefings back on our uh, what we did in Washington and Baltimore, um, broke down in small groups, um, and I gave assignments, uh, homework assignments out for this next meeting, which is Friday. Um, to come up with some proposals for the city to do uh, because the intent here is our police department, all of us, you've heard me say, 
we're coming after you, you know, if you use a gun or you commit a crime, we're doing everything we can and we'll bring resources and we'll do that. But using the community to help me, help us understand, uh, is there something we're missing? Is there something we're not doing? Is there something we need to know about? Um, and so that discussion, quite frankly, is still going on. Um, there have been a lot of ideas. We've had folks come to the group uh, to give their point of views from in the justice system, out of the justice system. We've heard a lot of, uh, from a lot of people. So we're trying to um, uh, finalize what ideas we might bring to you folks uh, with the intent of at least one or two objectives. And I'm hoping to have some ideas Friday. So please. Have you identified what some of the fundamental contributors are to crime in the city? Well, we certainly talk about and um, people have brought up those different ideas, which I don't think there's any really new ones that you haven't heard. Yeah. And I'll just, if Alderman Jobson or Alderman McGinnis or Ms. Spiegel or anyone else wants to add, I'm, I'm happy to let them. But um, it, so far it's been a great discussion, and um, I think we're getting to a point where maybe we'll have something for you soon. Fair enough? Roger that. I'm getting head knobs on folks. Thanks for asking. All right. Anything else, Alderman Lee? Roger that. So uh, I think uh, Alderwoman McGinnis. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just wanted to say that the third ward uh, meeting uh, for September will be uh, Monday, September 20th here in Chambers at 630. Um, and uh, I hope to see you then. Um, also, just to remind everybody, there are two more party in the parks for the season. Um, the next one is tomorrow um, at Goose um, Creek Park. Um, starts 530 to 730. Um, and there will be um, vendors and music and fun food, um, and I'll be there. We'll be looking at sort of the history of the neighborhood and finding out about that, about the poorhouse, which was in that location, and a little bit about that. A very um, um, five-mile house, which was mischief and mayhem and stabbings and people getting knocked in the head and everything else out in the country back in the 19th century, um, and uh, a lot of farms and just learning about that area. So. I hope you can join us. And then uh, next week, Thursday, is the very last one, um, and that will be at Yonge Park, 5.30 to 7.30. Again, um, hope you can join us there and help us uh, finish up this um, season of Party in the Park with a, um, uh, a lot of fun. So thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman um, Alderman Dorn. Thank you, Mayor. So the first announcement I have is that uh, coming this Monday, September 20th from 5 to 7, we'll have a special Fifth Ward meeting uh, at the Genesis Heart Institute, which is at 1236 East Russholm Street uh, over there on the Genesis uh, Hospital campus. But this one is in partnership with the EMA Genesis as uh, well as American uh, Water about a well. They are uh, wanting to drill next to the hospital in order to support uh, the hospital in the event that our main water plant was to go down. So the uh, we've been reassured that the uh, building the well will be in and um, all of the uh, uh, added traffic, you could say, that would be associated with having a well uh, next to the hospital will be uh, in conformance with the neighborhood and it, you'll be uh, barely be able to tell that it's there. Uh, however, it will take three months of uh, drilling in order to hit the water tablet. So uh, that is something that could be a uh, noise pain for the neighbors in that area. And so if you'd like to learn more about the project, learn more about uh, the noise that uh, potentially could be in there with that project, um, or if you just want to see me uh, one more time, uh, feel free to stop out at the uh, Genesis Heart Institute uh, next Monday. The other item I have is, as you can tell, I'm wearing this uh, silly looking tie. And uh, that is because if uh, you guys have uh, not seen the, the news, Iowa State unfortunately lost the big Iowa State-Iowa uh, game that we had this past weekend and so like I told Mayor Matson, I am wearing uh, this this black and gold tie that I look very good in Iowa State school colors of cardinal gold and black but I do not look that good in uh, Iowa's colors of black and gold so it is hard for me to uh, be wearing this right now 
But with uh, everything that uh, is silly about that football game, there's also so many good things that come out of it. The, the first one being uh, just some fun in the rough times that we're having. It's uh, always a fun time to find a way to uh, just step back, take a bigger look at life, and uh, realize that there's still fun and joy out in there for us all to have. Uh, the other one would be uh, with the football game, there's been a lot of great notoriety for the state, including College Game Day. And uh, that had uh, Carson King uh, was able to just start with a silly sign last year, two years ago, I guess it'd be, uh, asking for Bush Light money that turned into a $3 million donation uh, to the Children's Hospital. And he did it again this year uh, when College Game Day was there again and was able to raise 70000 uh, via that effort. So good that came for our state with that. And the other part of uh, this friendly bet that I, I wanted to make uh, was that I thought it would be fun this week, uh, whoever won the game, we could turn the sky bridge to either yellow or red for the, uh, the winner of the game. Well, when I asked uh, Tiffany and Samantha if the sky bridge was already uh, reserved for this week or not, there was uh, some poetic justice that it was already reserved for, uh, uh, in honor of Reed Gleason, who is uh, the uh, namesake behind the Rally for Reed organization that raises money for childhood cancer. And so uh, the fact that the Sky Bridge was already going to be gold in his honor and the fact that uh, uh, Iowa ended up winning his favorite team, it's uh, some poetic justice there. So I encourage you guys to check out that organization, and if you want to... Uh, here on a local level, do the good things that Carson King did with uh, the Iowa Iowa State game. I encourage you to uh, look at Rally for Reed and, and uh, give a donation to that organization. And uh, uh, remember when you see the Sky Bridge uh, in gold this uh, coming week that it's uh, not only for the Iowa Hawkeyes great win, but also for Reed Gleason. So with that, I'll uh, turn it back over to you, Mayor. Thank you for your participation. and. Uh fun uh, and uh, um, playing good. So um, it's always good to have a good rivalry and, you know, six in a row is pretty cool. So Alderman Grip. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to draw attention to an event in ribbon cutting this Friday um, after several years of uh, working with our community partners to uh, get the K-Square uh, revitalization done. The park is complete and open. It's been open for maybe a month now, uh, but the fog feature has not been turned on. And Friday evening, you can join us, uh, the city council, and some of the partners who made the, this park uh, happen at 7.30 at K-Square, and we will see the fog feature for the first time. If you have children, it'll be uh, very cool uh, for the children. I'm sure that it will be selfie-worthy, JJ. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Grimm. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll move on. Okay. So now we'll move to the four areas of discussion. The first area is community development. Um, Alderman Grip and Alderwoman uh, Lee will lead that discussion. Alderman Grip, none, right? Very good. So we'll move to the second area of discussion is public safety. Alderman Jobson and Alderwoman Dickman. Alderman Jobson, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Start the public safety. A portion with item number one, first consideration, ordinance amending schedule five of chapter 10.96 entitled four-way stop intersections by adding Eastern Avenue at Elm Street. Is there anyone from the public wishing to comment on this item? Anyone from council? Seeing none, that item will move on. Item number two, first consideration, ordinance amending schedule seven of chapter 10.96 entitled no parking by adding Ripley Street along the east side from second street north to the alley. Anyone from public wishing to comment on this item? Anyone from council? Seeing none, that item will move on. Item number three, first consideration ordinance, amending schedule seven of chapter 10.96, entitled no parking by adding Main Street along the west side from Palmer Drive, south, 580 feet. Is there anyone from public wishing to comment on this item? Council, seeing none, that item will move on. Next item four, resolution approving street lane, or public ground closures on the list of dates and times to hold outdoor events. I'll read each component and then ask for comment. First, Davenport Community School District West High School Homecoming Parade, 3505 West Locust Street, Thursday, September 30th, 2021, 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. 
parade route closures, West 18th Street from North Clark Street to North Elsie Avenue, North Elsie Avenue from West 18th Street to West Lombard Street, West Lombard Street from Elsie Avenue to North Nevada Avenue, North Nevada Avenue from West Lombard Street back to West High School. Next, St. Ambrose University, Killer B 5K and Bumble Rumble. Saturday, October 2, 2021, 7 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Closures, Lombard from Ripley to Lilly, Ripley from Lombard to Dover Court, Dover Court from Ripley to Gaines, Gaines from Dover Court to Lombard, Scott from Dover Court to Lombard, Rush Home from Gaines to Lilly, Lilly from Rush Home to Pleasant, Pleasant from Lilly to Warren, Warren from Pleasant to Spalding Boulevard, Spalding Boulevard from Warren to Berg Place, Berg Place from Spalding Boulevard to Lilly. Next, Davenport Association of Professional Firefighters, 7th Annual Fire, Muster and Lights and Sirens Parade, Village of East Davenport, Sunday, October 3rd, 2021, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Closures, East 11th Street between Mound Street and Jersey Ridge Road, Christie Street from 11th Street north to the alley. Next, Davenport Community School District, North Homecoming Parade, Thursday, October 7, 2021, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Parade route closures, northbound Division Street from Wood Intermediate to Northwest Boulevard, Northwest Boulevard from Division Street to West 56th Street, West 56th Street to Oak Brook Road, Oak Brook Road to West 57th Street, West 57th Street to Marquette Street, Marquette Street to West 60th Street, West 60th Street to Myrtle Street, Myrtle Street to West 59th Street, West 59th Street to Vine Street, Vine Street to West 58th Street, West 58th Street to Gaines Street, Gaines Street to finish at North High School. Next, St. Paul Lutheran Church, evening event, 2136 Brady Street, Friday, October 8, 2021, 1 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., closure, Lombard Street between Brady Street and Main Street. Next, Stickman Racing Group, Lago Marcino's Coco Bino 5K, Saturday, October 16, 2021, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., closure, East 11th Street from Mound Street to Hillcrest Avenue, to River Drive, River Drive from East 11th Street to McClellan Boulevard, slash River Drive, McClellan Boulevard, from River Drive to Kenwood, Kenwood Avenue, Wood Lane from McClellan Boulevard to Forest Road, Forest Road from Wood Lane to Wood, to Wood Lane, Wood Lane to City Limits, East Mere Drive from City Limits to Middle Road, Middle Road from East Mere Drive to Kenwood Avenue, Kenwood Avenue from Middle Road to McClellan Boulevard. Is there anyone from public wishing to comment on any of these items? Anyone from council? Seeing none, that item will move on. Oh, good, okay. Item number five, motion approving noise variance requests for the events on the listed dates and times. Again, I will read um, all these items before asking for comment. Davenport Community School District, West High School Homecoming Parade. See attached parade route. Thursday, September 30th, 2021, 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Outdoor music performances over 50 dBA. Next, Davenport Association of Professional Firefighters. Seventh Annual Fire Muster and Lights and Sirens Parade. Village of East Davenport, Sunday, October 3rd, 2021, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Outdoor music over 50 dBA. Next, Davenport Community School District, North High School Homecoming Parade. See attached parade route, Thursday, October 7th, 2021, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Outdoor music band over 50 dBA. And last, Mississippi Valley Fairgrounds, Oktoberfest 2815, West Locust Street, 7 p.m. Saturday, October 16th, 2021 to 12 a.m. Sunday, October 17th, 2021. Outdoor music band over 50 dBA. Is there anyone from public wishing to comment on these items? Anyone from council? Seeing none, that move, item will move on. And last, we have item number six, motion approving beer and liquor license applications. Um, I'll read the new uh, license and then uh, after that, there are the annual license renewals for uh, people's review. So the new license, new owner, temporary permit, temporary outdoor area, location, transfer, et cetera. Quad City JCs, Davenport JCs, United States Junior Chamber of Commerce, 400 Biderbeck Drive, temporary outdoor event, barbecue C festival, September 30th to October 3rd, class B liquor. And then again, the annual license renewals. Is there anyone from public wishing to comment on these items? Anyone from council? Alderman Ambrose. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Tom, MC Happy Hollow on Washington Street. Two shootings within a month coming from their parking lot. 
Five different times we tried to stop their liquor license. I'd like to ask this to be tabled to allow you and the police chief to once again reach out to the state and try to get some direction. You know, this has been a, as you know, this has been a habitual nuisance property ever since they moved there. And we have a great neighborhood. They do everything asked of by the police department and by the city. But yet we have habitual nuisance properties that never seem to be addressed unless it's the uh, historic Riverview Park. We'll close that up in a minute. So Tom, I'd ask you to reach out to the state with the chief and uh, get some recommendations. I mean, this can't go on any longer. I'd ask for a motion to table this. Second. We have a motion and a second to table. Just voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And then I would ask Alderwoman McGinnis, or Alderwoman Dickman, sorry, Alderwoman McGinnis to put you on the spot. Alderwoman, Alderwoman Dickman to please set the agenda. That's okay, she can have the job too, but uh, I will place all items on consent except for the item that was tabled. I make a motion. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Back to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Jobson. Next area is public works. Alderman Dunn and Alderman Dorman will discuss Alderman Dorn. Alderman Dunn, please. Thank you, Your Honor. We have 11 items this evening. <clears throat> Item number one is a resolution approving the plan specification, form of contract, and estimated cost for the Goose Creek Shared Use Trail Project from 53rd Street to 59th Street in Brady. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none. Seeing none, this item will move on. <clears throat> item number two is a resolution approving the plan specification, form of contract, an estimated cost for the Prospect Park sewer separation. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Uh, can we have Clay Merrick come up here for just a second, please? Thank, thank you, Clay. I, I really don't have any questions about this one, but I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday and let everybody know that today is <laughs> today is your birthday and we, we appreciate you being here tonight on your birthday. Oh, Item number three is the resolution accepting work completed of the Sheffield Drive, 54th Street, the Hillendale Road reconstruction project by Tri-City Blacktop of Bettendorf, Iowa in the amount of $263,000. $222.05. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number four is a resolution accepting work completed under the Jersey Farms Park Project by Emory Construction Group of Moline, Illinois, in the amount of $484,587.50. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Alderman Ambrose. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First off, this project and what Alderman Grips the uh, Case Ware Park. You know, they were a long time in the making and designing, particularly this one. This was part of the negotiations with the casino in the neighborhood to allow our casino to be built out there. So what are we talking? Five, six years? And then Alderman Grips said a couple of years down at Case Ware. You know, there was a, that was a nice park, but it was neglected for so long. It, it took a sizable amount of money to bring it back. So, you know, we got some great parks. You know, sadly, the greatest park in our city, which is south of Locust, is closed. And I'm really concerned about the timeline to get this project off the ground because of this took five or six years, K-Square took two years. You know, I would hate to see the neighbors and the businesses suffer any more than they have to. So maybe administration can uh, take that into consideration. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. Anyone else? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number five is a resolution accepting work completed under the Thunderbrook Park Bridge over Blackhawk Creek Repair Project 
completed by general contractors of Bettendorf, Iowa in the amount of $257,481.92. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number six is a resolution amending the resolution assessing alley resurfacing projects from the north-south alley between Farnham and LeClaire from Garfield to Columbia and the east-west alley between Glassbell and Schricker from Pine to Belmont, completed in the fall of 2019, 2019. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number seven is a resolution authorizing the Assistant City Administrator Public Works Director to sign transit ride reimbursement program agreements with various organizations and education institutions. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number eight is a resolution awarding the contract for the Modern Woman Park HVAC and Event Center project, the Swanson Construction of Bettendorf, Iowa, in the amount of $1,118,210. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. I just had a couple things that I asked yesterday, and uh, I know that we approved this project when we renegotiated the contract with Modern with Modern Woodman, and we agreed to do this project, but we agreed to cap it at one point two million dollars. But seeing as the bids come back and the engineering costs, we're right there at that uh, cost. So I want to make sure that all the change orders. What are we going to do with the change orders? That we either value engineer this or something. And then my next concern is. Beans, they're not going to be able to use that space. I don't, I, I hope we have an agreement with them that they're not going to come back and say, we weren't be able to use this space. You're going to owe us, you know, extra, owe us some money or take it off their rent because this, you know, this is a shared project. This, when this project first came to us, it was an HVAC project. Now it's an HVAC and event center project. Well, if I recall, it started out at five, five hundred thousand dollars then $900,000 then $1 million, and now one point two. So I, I know we approved it, but I just want to make sure we keep track of the cost and anything extra that the city's not on the hook for. So that's all I got. Thank you. Anyone else? Alderman Ambrose. Thanks, Mr. Chair. You know, the stadium is very important to our great city, to the downtown. And I know you get very concerned about some of those issues down there. But ultimately, as long as I've been on the council, the council has agreed to everything that has happened to the state. And there's always been a good, open, and honest dialogue. And then ultimately, the council has the final say. So councils in the past have agreed. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but uh, we have a great stadium. And it uh, costs a little money to keep it up. And we can't stifle free speech in our great city. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. Anyone else? Item number nine is a resolution authorizing the submission of an application for the Federal Recreational Trails Program and Grant Assistance with the construction for the Nahant Marsh Trail System Project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 10 is a motion approving the process and procedures for snow removal to ensure safety and welfare of residents and visitors during winter weather events. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number 11 is a motion awarding the contract. Mr. Chair. Yes, Alderman Ambrose. Thanks. You bet. Nicole, you gave a great presentation yesterday at our work session on the I was wondering if maybe if one of our committee of the holes or council meetings for the public, you could give a presentation on the snow routes and snow removal because you know, I think it's very important that the good people of Great Fourth Ward are aware of uh, how things are going to be run. So in the very near future, if you could find the time to put a presentation on at a council meeting, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. Anyone else? Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number 11 is a motion awarding the contract for the repair of the Roots MVI 74-10 600 horsepower blower to Hodden Roots LLC of Springfield, Missouri and the amount of $52,550. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? 
Council, seeing on this item, we'll move on. And Alderman Dorman, would you set the agenda for us, please? I move to place all 11 items on the consent agenda. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. And the, agenda, the agenda is set. And back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Dorman. Uh, sorry, Alderman Dunn. The last item is finance. Alderman Condon and Alderman Miller will lead that. Alderman Condon, please. Thank you, Your Honor. There are two items on finance this evening. Item number one is a resolution authorizing the conveyance of city-owned parcels F0047-03 and F0047-28 to Kenneth Willington of 519 East 9th Street and the former owner of parcel F0047-03. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, that moves on. Item number two is a motion awarding the contract for talent development consulting services to Paradigm Consulting Works, LLC of Santa Rosa Valley, California. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Anyone from council? Alderwoman Lee? Thank you. Um, could I ask a member of staff to talk about what the purpose of this contract is for the public and why it's this company and not the other company that was originally... <coughs> Sure. Uh, so as we talked probably several months ago, we went through a competitive bid process um, for kind of executive consulting and talent development. Our organization has changed a lot over the past several years and will continue to change. Um, and so this was something that we identified as kind of a continuity of operations and, and strengthening our team priority. Uh, we did previously award this to another firm. And as we went through contract negotiations and ultimately starting to schedule uh, implementation of the project, we couldn't reach terms and uh, in specifically the area of them coming on site to participate. And we didn't feel like a completely virtual uh, training was going to be an effective solution for our team. So we went to the second place bidder on that list. And what was the difference in cost? I don't have that off the top of my head, but I can get it to you. Thank you. Anyone else from council? That item will move on, presumably. Uh, Alderman Miller, will you please set our agenda? Uh, Alderman Condon and I propose that we uh, place both items on consent agenda. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That concludes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, below here, we have uh, purchases from $10,000 to $50,000. We list those each week here on your agenda for your information, uh, but we don't read each out loud. Uh, that concludes finance, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Condon. Um, the next item, is there any other ordinances, resolutions, or motions? There are none this evening. Next item, is there any public good business? If there are, please come. If you folks want to come back up here, fine. If not, it's up to you. Um, please, the little right in front of the table, the microphone's above you. Have five minutes. Please give your name, ward, or address, either address or ward. We never ask you to give your address as the only thing. You can give your ward. I appreciate if you like. that, Mr. Mayor. And... Uh, Five minutes, thank you. Thank you. Ron Swainer, 2366 West 47. You know, people ask me, why do I come here? Because I vote. You guys are our voice. You need to hear from us. That's why week after week, I've encouraged other people to reach out to your council people, the mayor, the city. That's how we make this a better place. Now, not all my ideas are perfect, but who cares? I'm here to push a discussion, get things talked about, try to encourage people to become part of this government. We the people. This is a very special place. My family's been here generations. This is home. That's why I'm here. That's why I'll continue to talk and encourage everyone else. We have a wonderful meeting coming up with Mr. Mayor. I appreciate you doing that, Mr. Mayor, listening session. But this is also a listening session for the people. So with email, phone calls. I just encourage everyone, get involved in your local government. For government to be truly of the people, by the people people to keep speaking out and to give us the, as a city direction where we'd like to see do we agree or disagree 
doesn't matter. But your voice does count. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Adjourn. Uh, seeing no one. There's a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very good. Enjoy your weekend. It's going to be warm, so summer hasn't left. So drink water and uh, take care of and look out for individual, especially the elderly and the children. Thank you.